So today what we're going to talk about, and this is really a foundational thing, but even at a high level, like you can go really deep with this, but we're going to talk about the lead management policy today. And basically we're going to go over the mindset and then the process of how you treat, you know, how you should treat every lead that comes into your world, right? There's a, there's a strategy behind how you treat leads so that you can ultimately get the most conversion because really what we're, what we're playing the game we're playing, guys, is it's a couple of things. It's getting leads to come in to your world, right? However you get them, whether you get a Zillow call, whether you do an open house, whether you post on social media and someone hits you up, whether you get a referral from your past client, you, whether you door knock, whether you telemarket, whether you call the pawn, that's all lead generation, right? That's all attraction, right? That's all you attracting people to come into your world. So I really want you guys to understand that there is nothing special in any of those, right? Like if you door knock and you door knock a hundred doors, you're going to get someone that is thinking about buying or selling. If you pick up the phone and call hundred people, you're going to get someone that's thinking about buying or selling, right? Or has questions. If you answer a bunch of Zillow calls, you're going to get someone who's hot, right? Like it's just, all of those are just basically lead generation or lead attraction, right? So when you understand that, like on the surface level, I want you guys to, take like a, a bird's eye view of the business, right? Like from a top level is our job every day is to develop new opportunities. And then once those opportunities come into our world, once they become a lead, then how do you convert them at the highest level, right? So the game we're playing a lot of times um, is it's lead conversion, right? Lead conversion is really the important part of the business because we already know that just being on our team, there's a lot of leads coming in, right? But how do you convert more of those leads into clients and transactions, right? That's where having a system and a process and a mindset comes into play. So it's not the sexy part of the business, right? Because everyone just wants to get a lead and expect the deal to close, but it's the crucial part of our business because if you don't have a process in place, you could be... Uh, losing deals on the side, right? Like you can get a bunch of leads, but if you don't have a process, they're going to go with someone else or you're not going to be that effective or you already got to think in your mind that there's some other real estate agent talking to them, right? If someone co contacts us through Zillow, you have to assume in your mind that they're clicking on another website as well. They went on Redfin, they went on Trulia, they went on Zillow, they went to an open house. There's other agents that are in their ear, right? So what do we do to convert them? at a higher level and make sure more of those leads turn into closes, right? So that's really what the, what the mindset is all about. Now let's talk about strategy and I'm gonna go through the lead management policy. And it's great that Blanca is on here because she's someone that really understands this and has used this effectively to convert deals. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen and pull up this document. Um, and for those of you guys that, um, haven't seen this, it's in the uh, Google Drive. If you just go on Google Drive and you just type in lead management policy, you'll see it come up. But what this is guys, and, and it's, this thing has been tweaked, you know, over time. And this, this may not be the most recent version, but what it is, is an outline of like what to do when a lead comes in, right? And different things you can utilize on the team to help uh, convert a lead into a, a, an appointment and then an appointment into a client. So let's talk about it first. So for lead management policy, it kind of breaks down the different steps. So we're going to walk through these. And what I want you to end up getting out of this is that there's a process that you have to implement. And the people who understand this at a high level and understand like every lead needs to be treated the same are the people who convert at the highest level. Um, for example, like let's say your cousin calls you and wants, you know, wants information about buying a home, um, you wouldn't treat them different than if a Zillow lead came in. It'd be the same exact process, right? There's a process of entering it into FirePoint, making sure you tag it correctly, making sure you put notes in the system, making sure you put them on a campaign or a search. I mean, we know we, we, know we gotta do that for like Zillow leads and stuff like that, but then for some reason, like when we get like a referral or when we get like a, uh, like a cousin or an aunt or an uncle who's like an SOI, 
we tend to not do the same process. We tend to like forget things, right? Or we tend to like, oh, I'm not going to put them on a search. It's my cousin, right? Or I'm not going to put them on a campaign. It's, it's my best friend from high school. But, and that's the part where people go wrong. Like, because you got to think about this game as like a volume type of game, right? If I'm getting, you know, 15, 20 new leads every month that are coming into my, my system and think of, if you add that up, right? Let's say you're getting 50, let's say you're getting 10 leads a month, 10 leads a month through your different sources, right? In two months, that's 20 and three months, that's 30, then 40, then 50, then 60. And before you know it, you got hundreds of leads in your pipeline. So how do you effectively manage those leads and make sure that things don't slip through the cracks? And that's where the policy comes in place, right? So not only is it the mindset, but it's, it's a strategy, right? So does everyone understand why it's important to have a lead management policy? Or is there any questions on, I guess, maybe put it in the chat or you feel free to unmute yourself and ask, is there anybody who doesn't understand why it's important? to have a process in place of how you handle every lead. Okay. Um, and here's the thing, I'm gonna stop sharing this real quick because uh, I think it's important to say these things. Um, you can wing it. Here's the thing is, and this is some, you can have success by winging it, you know? You can have some success. Like if you just get leads and you kind of like in your mind, like, oh shit, I gotta call that guy back or, oh shoot, I got to call this guy back. Or you just kind of loosely punch them in or you put them in the system and you don't put notes in the system or you don't put them on a campaign or whatever it might be. Like, sure, you can close some deals. Like, but what happens is in the beginning, you have a lot more bandwidth, right? Like when you don't have a lot of leads, like let's say for Brenda, you're just, you're, you're pretty new to the game, right? I'm going to use Brenda as an example. She might only have, you know, 15 or 20 leads in, in her pipeline right now, right? So for her, like she may be able to stay on top of them by just kind of remembering, right? Like, oh, I got to call this guy or I got to call that guy or maybe like punching something into her calendar or something like that or maybe having things written on a notepad or, like her notes or whatever. Like she may be able to pull that off with 10 or 15 leads. But the minute that, one of those leads like becomes hot and she has to go show homes now and she has to go call the listing agent and she has to schedule property searches and they want to write an offer. So she has to work on the offer and she has to show up to the team meetings and she has to track her numbers and she has to do all these different things. And then we have training today and we have all these other things and then leads are still coming in. It becomes really overwhelming really quick if there's no system in place. And then you use someone who's on the complete opposite spectrum of like someone like Blanca, who's been in the game for a long time and has a lot of leads. Blanca may have 400 leads in her fire point. You know, so for Brenda, who has 10 or 15, it's manageable to kind of just wing it. But for Blanca, who has like 400, like there's no way she's going to remember all 400. There's no way she's going to even remember 15 or 20 because she's so busy on consults and showings and writing offers and doing all these other things, right? And the reason most agents fail in this business or don't have consistent success or their business is constantly going up and down, up and down, up and down, where they got a couple deals and then those dry up and they have nothing for a couple months and then they get a couple more deals. It's because they don't have a system in place that constantly keeps hot opportunity in front of them. They're winging the business. They're not tracking their numbers. They're not managing their pipeline effectively. They don't have a system behind how they follow up with people and they wing it and they focus on who's hot in front of them and they put all their attention and then they stop calling those ones who said, call me back in three months or call me back in six months. And then what happens is they finally remember to call that person back and they're already working with another agent. So then they're back to trying to hunt for a new opportunity again. And they're constantly just chasing what's hot, what's hot, what's hot in front of them, right? And that's why you have a business that's up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, right? So when you can create a system or have a system and a flow and a process of how you manage all your pipeline and your leads and know that that's probably the most important thing that you have to do as a salesperson, that's when you can create a business where it's constantly pumping out deals 
where you constantly have two, three, four, five deals going on at one time because the system is doing some of the work for you and it's managing these other clients. So you're able to focus on the hot ones. The system is doing some of the work for you to manage the other ones. And then there are always people, okay, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. And you're constantly putting deals in the pipe, right? And that's how someone like, like Blanca is always busy because I know she spends a lot of time managing her pipeline. Um, Blanca, can you give me, oh, she's on a call right now, but um, talk to me if you can about, about your morning, like how you manage your morning every day with, with managing your pipeline. Maybe those of you guys in the office just hit mute on your, on your computers if you guys are in the same room as Blanca. Okay, sorry. My was uh, broadcasting and we were overlapping. I'm sorry, what was the question? Talk to me about your morning, like how you start off your mornings every day. Cause I, I know I've seen you in action. I know I see what you do, but tell me like how you start off your mornings every day and how you, how you work Firepoint. Like walk me through kind of that process for you. Yeah, I think I really honed down Firepoint when we were with COVID. I think that's where it was a challenge for me. And I just really, um, owned it because if you don't believe in it or you don't try it or you don't implement it, it's like you said, you're just chasing the hot leads or you're putting out the fires. And at the end of the day, you're relying on your brain and there's only so much your brain can remember. So for me, Firepoint has really helped out a lot and also the calendar in the sense where every morning I just go to my task, my hot leads or my follow-up nurtures. And I already know who I need to contact who I need to follow up with, who I need to stay top of mind, and then also utilizing the system with the campaigns. The campaigns are the behind the scenes, staying in touch, doing the work, because it's impossible, like you said, when you have 300, 400 leads to stay top of mind and to stay in connection with these clients. So definitely the hot ones are the ones you really want to target on a daily basis and stay in touch with, but also those nurtures, because that's going to be your future business. That's going to be who's going to be hitting the pipeline, hopefully in three to six months down the line for that, so that your quarters are building as well. Um, anytime there's a shifting market, like the one we're having right now is when it's more crucial for you to stay top of your game, because that is when you can lose track other agents, the competition's going to get harder. And um, I'm, I'm even hearing it with some of the Zillow leads coming in um, or Redfin leads coming in where I had a client over the weekend who said Redfin's offering me 8,000 on a bonus rebate just to work with them. Blanca, what are you going to offer me? So, you know, that is where it's going to start getting a little more cutthroat and challenging and we got to be on top of our game. But for me, my mornings is just really following up and staying in touch with those clients. How much time would you say you spend each morning, like just digging through your PowerPoint? I'm here till noon. I'm here till noon, just really digging through it and really just going through it. If I have to stay longer, I'll stay longer. If I don't have showings in the afternoon, I'm following up, trying to book those showings for the rest of the week. Yeah. Yeah. And I've seen her. Um, I was getting my house remodeled and I was staying with my parents for a little while. So uh, this was during COVID. And I would see, I would wake up every morning, come downstairs, and Blanca would be at the kitchen table with her fire point open every single morning, at least Monday through Thursday, probably sometimes Friday. But every single morning, spending a solid couple hours just going through fire point. And I'd hear her following up, hey, it's Blanca just checking in, just following up. Hey, we spoke this time. Hey, how's everything? Like, just a follow-up game, putting notes in the system, uh, putting people on campaigns, updating property searches, you know, calling the hot ones. She'd have her PowerPoint and she'd have a notepad and she'd be writing stuff on the notepad and then punching stuff in the PowerPoint. And it was pretty much like clockwork every single day. There may have been a few days here and there where maybe she had something going on in the morning or like an appointment or something. But I would say 90% of the time, it was, she was spending anywhere from an hour to two hours to four hours just in the fire point, just drumming up that opportunity and just keeping that thing organized, clearing tasks, updating the calendar. And during COVID is when Blanca had one of her best years ever, you know? So it's, it's no coincidence that the daily actions and the daily habits led to, was a big part of Blanca's success. And obviously she's an awesome agent and, and, and she's experienced and she's great with clients, but you can be the best agent 
and you can know how know it all. But if you're unorganized in your business and you don't have a way that you're keeping on top of all your, your, your leads, you will always be limited on how much you will grow and how much you will produce in a year. Right. Yeah. And it's true. And, and it's not the fun part, but honestly, it's a fundamental part of your business because if we don't do it or we're not on it, it's going to show, or you're going to end up not building your pipeline. So yeah. if you just own that and master it, you will start seeing the results. You will start seeing the fruits of, you know, your hard work. So just keep on it. It is a nurture game. It's a nurture game. It's the conversion game. It's the pipeline game. So I want everybody to say, like, repeat this word, these words, my job is to create a pipeline, right? My job is to create a pipeline and fill a pipeline, something to that effect, right? That is your job is to constantly fill your pipeline, right? You got to think of your business as a pipeline. It isn't just to focus on the deal that I have in front of me. That's important, but it's to constantly add to that, that pipeline, right? You got to keep adding new prospects, new candidates, you know, because people are going to come and go. Um, and if you, if you only focus on who you have in front of you, like who you're showing homes to or who you're meeting with, and let's say one of those people decides like to hold off or they decide not to buy and you haven't been adding to the pipeline, then what happens to your business? You're back to square one trying to build something up again, right? So we don't want people to have inconsistent businesses. We want to have businesses that are predictable and scalable. We want to have you guys be able to pump out two, three, four, five escrows every single month because you understand that we're in the pipeline game and we're in the conversion game, right? We're thinking big picture. We're thinking long-term. We're thinking a strong foundation. We're thinking a big business that just keeps going, right? We're not just thinking like, oh, I'm just going to close a deal, take some time off, close a deal, take some time off. That's not how it works. Um, it's like going to the gym, right? You can't just expect to go to the gym a couple of days and get results. It's something you got to keep doing every single day, right? Um, consistent is the consistency, right? So, okay. So I think we did a good job of, of getting the mindset out, right? Making everyone understand why it's important. And you hear it firsthand from one of the top producers in our office, right? Why it's important. So let's talk a little bit about strategy and I'm going to pull up the, the document again. We're just going to run through this and then I'm going to show you some examples in FirePoint of what you're gonna do with, with the client. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, so lead management policy. So basically what this is, is it kind of breaks down the process of conversion like in sections, right? From when a lead is new to when you set the appointment, right? So for some of the leads guys, there's gonna be some automatic campaigns that are assigned. Um, like let's say you get a lead from Z buyer, we've programmed FirePoint to where when the lead comes in, it automatically will put them on like a text and email campaign. So this is important because let's say you get a lead right now, but you're like out in a showing and you're not able to call that client because you're with the client right now, but you got the lead, the system will automatically text and email that client within five minutes. So the lead hits your, hits your FirePoint the system will call and text that, not call, it's gonna text it and it's gonna email it. Um, and I'll show you an example of a Z buyer one. Um, uh, let's see. Let's see what the most recent Z buyer lead is that we've had. Here's Z buyer. Okay, so this one came in. And see this one, it wasn't able to do it because this is the landline. So it wasn't able to text them. Uh, let me find a better example. Let's check this one out. That was a bad number. That was mine. Bad number also? It was disconnected, yeah. Okay, but let me show you what a campaign does. Uh, for some reason, it doesn't look like the campaign went out, but you can easily apply this campaign manually. So if I go to campaigns here, and I click add one, I'm just gonna use this as an example. There is a Z buyer online inquiry seller campaign. So when I click on this campaign and I hit save, it's gonna send them an email right now. 
And then what I want to show you is I want to show you what the campaign looks like. So we will go to campaigns here. And I'll show you what that Z buyer campaign looks like step by step. So some of these are automated, but if it doesn't trigger autom automatically, you can just simply apply the campaign and let it help you do some stuff. So Z buyer, this is the campaign I just assigned. Can you guys all see my screen? Okay. So when this lead comes in, when you assign this campaign, it's going to take five minutes. And then what's going to happen is it's going to text the client automatically. Hey, John, I'm working on the request for information you just submitted online about your home. What's the best way to reach you? It'll wait five minutes more, and then it'll send them an email as well. And ZBuyer, for those of you guys that know what ZBuyer is, ZBuyer is like a, a site where we get leads from where people just inquire about their home's value. So they might have like responded to an online ad or something like trying to find out what their home is worth. So say, hi, you know, hi, and it'll insert their name. It'll take the name from whoever the lead. Hi, John, you had submitted an inquiry recently that you were looking for an evaluation on your home. I left a voicemail earlier. Wanted to follow up with a quick email. If that's easier for you, when can we talk? It'll wait one day, right? And it's gonna tell you to call it. So it'll give you a task saying, call, call this lead. So it'll also give you a reminder. Um, one day later, it'll send a text as well. John, I'm putting in some time this morning on your home, but I got a few questions. I really want to get the numbers right for you. It'll wait another day and tell you to call it. It'll send it an email, right? Hey, John, just reaching out again to see what, uh, what you need in regards to that sold information for your home. I'm working up on market analysis, but I still have a few questions. Can you shoot me a call back at this number? And it'll put your fire point number in there. Um, three days later, it'll send another email. Four days later, it'll send another text. Six days later, it sends another text. If the client doesn't respond at the end of six days, it's going to send them this text here. Uh, hey, John, I'm not sure if you received any of my emails or texts regarding your inquiry. Just want to make sure I didn't do something wrong. Were you still interested in knowing what your home could sell for? So this is basically a six day campaign that's going to do a lot of automatic stuff for you. So what I want you guys to, to notice is it's not just about calling the lead, right? Obviously, your job should be to call that lead as quick as possible and try to connect with them over the phone. That's the best way, right? If you call someone, you get them on the phone, you can have that dialogue with them. But we already know that when you call people, a lot of times it could be hit or miss, right? Maybe they don't answer. Maybe the timing wasn't right. Maybe... You were busy and you didn't get to call them right away. So the system can do certain things for you, right? Where it's sending stuff out on your behalf and it's helping create that, that nurture for you um, so that it basically is doing some of the work for you, right? You're letting the, the technology do some of the work for you in addition to you calling them, right? And the goal when a brand new lead comes in is for us to try to make contact with that lead, right? We want to try to make contact. We want to try to figure out what they're looking for, and then we want to try to book an appointment, right? That's the goal. So that initial process, there's a process and steps that, that go with that, right? From just getting someone to come in and being able to make the initial contact with them. Um, for some of you guys, have you guys had leads that you receive and you guys call and they just don't answer or you're not able to connect with them? That happens all the time, right? And when that happens, Here's what, here's what naturally people will think, right? They call, they don't answer. Maybe they'll call again later on in that day if they don't answer. And then you get another lead that comes in. Then your focus goes to that other lead. And what happens is subconsciously, you might think, oh, well, that lead didn't answer two times. It's not a good lead, right? But what we know is that it's not necessarily that it's not a good lead. It could be the timing wasn't right. It could be you caught them when they were at work and they didn't have their phone on them right? There's a lot of different reasons why that lead didn't answer. Maybe they didn't recognize your number and they thought you were spam. Um, there's different reasons why that lead doesn't answer. So just because they don't answer in the first couple of tries, that doesn't mean it's a bad lead. In fact, we have seen cases where we call a lead for a week straight. And then finally, at the end of the week, they finally pick up or they finally respond to a text or an email. And then we're able to talk to them. We're able to book that appointment. 
right? So we have to just know that it's going to take 10 to 15 attempts in different ways, calls, text, emails, right? To make contact with a lot of leads, right? Like there's a lot of the leads that you're not going to make contact on that first try, right? So you want to keep trying to call them yourself, but you also want to implement some of these campaigns to help do some of that work for you. So it's working, you know, while you're doing other things. Does that make sense, guys? Are there any questions about like that initial campaign? Um, what I want to show you is that there's campaigns that we've built for a lot of things. So um, there are campaigns for Zillow. There are campaigns for Redfin. So depending on where the lead came from, if you just look in here, there's different campaigns. There's a, if it's a mortgage lead, if it's a buyer lead, if it's a seller lead, if it's a Zillow, if it's a Redfin, if it's just an online lead, there's different ones that you can apply. So if you have a lead and you're like, hey, I called this lead two or three times, they didn't answer. I wanna just initiate a campaign to let the campaign do some text and emails for me and see if I can reach them that way. Just go to campaign and search for the appropriate one and just apply the campaign and let the campaign do the work, right? And then you're gonna move on to that next lead that comes in and you're gonna to continue to call. So between you calling and between the campaign texting and emailing, in that week, you'll probably have hit them 10, 15 times. And you'll know like if, if we made a solid, solid attempt, right? Now, if you called a lead multiple times, they got texted, they got emailed, the campaign went through, all of those things, and you know there was at least 10 to 15 attempts between everything in that week, and you still haven't been able to reach them, then at that point, that's when I would just throw that lead into the pond. I would just get rid of it and throw it into the pond and throw it into the general pond, let someone else have at it because you're going to get more leads coming in. But if you know for a fact you didn't implement campaigns, you know you only called once or twice, maybe you text once, you know, and you couldn't reach them, then you just need to know that you didn't, you didn't make enough attempts. Right. There needs to be a solid 10 to 15 attempts on every single lead between all the different things that I talked about before you can determine that that's not a good lead. So um, going forward, I just want to set the expectation that it's going to take a lot more attempts than what you're used to to convert one of these leads to an, a contact and to an appointment. Right. The. Uh, the ideal world would be you get a lead, you call it, they answer the first try, you book an appointment, right? Like that's, that's the ideal world. That doesn't, it's not realistic. That's not the way it goes down with these leads, right? With any lead. Um, so just know that that's the game you're playing. Raise your hand if, if after hearing this, you're like, yeah, I don't, I'm probably not hitting these leads up 10 to 15 times for sure. Right. Um, and I've been guilty of it. Right. And stuff like that. And it's but remember, if you're in sales and if you're in the business of getting leads and it's same thing with open house leads, same thing with any lead, same thing with like if your cousin says, hey, he's thinking about buying and then you try to call him and he never answers because he's busy with work or with his kids or whatever it might be. There needs to be, you know, that many attempts before you say, hey, this is not a good lead or this lead is, you know, you've squeezed every single ounce of juice out of that lemon, so to say, and you know, there's nothing left, right? And then you can leave that lead and say, you know what, I did, I did everything. I tried my best. I put them on campaigns. I did all of these things. Now I'm just going to release that lead. And I know that I, I gave it a hundred percent on that. Any questions or comments or feedback on this, this part of it? Okay. Let's go to the next part, right? Let's say you did all of that and the lead answered, right? Maybe you called them, maybe you texted them, maybe you emailed them, maybe it was the seventh attempt and then they finally answered you and you spoke to them. When you speak to a lead, there's gonna be two outcomes. Outcome number one is, yes, I'm interested. Let's meet, you book an appointment. That's one outcome, right? 
And that's the outcome we're all shooting for, right? We talk to a lead, we want to book the appointment. But what's the other outcome that you guys get? If you don't book the appointment, what's typically the, the other outcome? I just did just browsing. I accidentally clicked on something and it took me down a rabbit hole. Now you're calling me. Okay, what else? What's the other outcome? So there's a not interested, right? There's one more outcome. And it's, it goes with that is I am interested, but not yet. Not right now. I do want to buy. I do want to sell. But not yet. I'm not ready for three months. I'm not ready for six months. I'm just trying to get information, but we want to make a move in six months. Right? It's going to be one of those, right? It's going to be either, yes, thanks for calling. Sorry, I haven't reached you back. I've been busy. Thanks for, thanks for being persistent. Right? I've gotten all your texts, all your emails. Yeah, I, I do want to meet. I do want to talk about selling, or I do want to talk about buying, or I do want to see that home. Right? I was just busy. Or... Hey, I'm not interested. Uh, I didn't, I just clicked on that. I didn't mean for you to call me, right? That's one outcome that happens. But the other most likely outcome, right? Assuming that that was the right person that clicked is like, yes, I am interested or I do want to do something, but I'm still early on in the stage and I'm still three months out. I'm six months out. I'm a year out. I'm eight months out, right? Which is essentially a nurture, right? Someone that wants to do something, but they're a nurture. So let's talk about that real quick. If someone, if you call them, they want to book an appointment. Well, great. You book the appointment, right? And then you, obviously you set that appointment up, you put notes in the system, you put it on the calendar, you book that console and you try to meet with them. If they don't, if they say they're not interested or they, Hey, I just clicked on this thing. What should you do at that point? What should you do if a, lead, if a lead comes in and you call it back and they're like, oh, well, I was just browsing. I was just looking. I'm, you know, we're not really interested or I, I filled out some information. I didn't know you were going to call me. What, what should you do at that point? It sounds like you have a thought of purchasing. Yeah. Ask questions, right? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> do you want me to set you up on a search so you can keep an eye on the market? I mean, that's usually... What I'll do. Yeah, so I would always question them, right? Because you got to think about this way is people, are, people lie a lot of times, right? It could be that you're the fifth person that called them and that's why they're just, they're already tired of hearing from people, right? So that's why speed to lead is important. When the lead comes in, the quicker you can call it back, you're going to reach them first. And the first person that's able to talk to them is going to have the best chance of, you know, influencing them or setting up a, you know, an appointment or something. But if you waited a day or two to call that lead back and three other agents already called them because they put their information online somewhere, you're already the third or fourth annoying agent that's contacted them, right? So speed to lead is important, right? And that's why the campaigns come into play where like you'll text them in five minutes and it'll help, you know, do that. But calling them right off the bat is important. But let's assume that you call them and they're just saying like, hey, I'm not interested or whatever. Here's the thing. If someone went online and filled, filled out their information, they are interested in something. They wouldn't have like went online. They wouldn't have filled something out on a public website where they got to put their phone number and their email if they weren't looking to do something. The chances are that you're just not asking the right questions or you just reach them too late and they're already annoyed because they didn't know so many agents were going to call them or maybe your voice or you didn't hit it off or whatever it might be, there's a chance that there was some sort of disconnect there, right? Um, so I would kindly confront them, right? Um, like, hey, you said, yeah, I totally understand. Yeah, I'm sure you got a bunch of calls. Um, I just want to verify that I'm not getting the wrong information. Did you actually put your information on a website, you said, yeah? Yeah, I, I did put my phone number and my information on the website, but oh, okay. um, I just, uh, I wanted to hold off with it right now. Oh, okay, okay. Have you gotten a bunch of calls from agents? Yeah, I have actually. You're like the seventh one. Oh, uh, okay. I totally understand. And that's probably why you, you want to hold off. I totally understand. Yeah, um, all of you guys sound the same. 
Yeah, I know. And guess what? I got to work with all those guys. That's crazy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Yesenia, when, when do you think you might be wanting to look back into this so I can follow up with you at an appropriate time? You know, I'm just trying to see what, what houses I like, if it's a house that I want, if I want a big lot, two houses, two bedrooms, three bedrooms. I'm just wanting to look at the houses through Zoom. I don't really want to connect with the real estate agent as of yet. Okay, cool. Yeah, if you could tell me a little bit more about that, I can make sure and just send you the right houses. Uh, what areas were you looking at? All right, we'll stop right there. But you see how like, by me just asking a little bit of questions, I got her to like now tell me that she just wants to see houses, right? So it went from, no, I'm not interested. I want to hold off. So then I said, oh, are you getting a bunch of calls? Right. And I kind of made a joke out of it. Right. And then I got her to say, well, honestly, this is just what I'm looking for. Right. And then from there, I'm able to build on that and kind of go through that rabbit hole and then, you know, follow up with her at an appropriate time. But I was never like trying to close her or trying to push her really hard. Like, that's the thing is you're going to get some leads where they're just annoyed because you reached them too late. So rather than like me, like battle them, like, well, no, this is your info. You did fill this out, right? Like this is Yesenia, right? We're not lying, right? Like, it's like, no, it's like, oh, hey, totally understand. Just want to make sure like I didn't get the wrong info, right? Like it's me more like being on her side and, and empathizing with her than trying to make her wrong, right? Um, so that's how you're going to deal with that scenario, right? The other scenario is like, I am interested, but I'm just a little far out. Well, hey, you know, when do you think is a better time to talk about this? Or when do you think you might be wanting to, you know, look a little more proactively or speak a little more proactively about this situation, right? Um, and she might say, oh, maybe in three months is really when I'm trying to make a move. And six months is when I'm trying to make a move. And that's when I can have that dialogue. Okay, well, what do you think would be helpful in the meantime? Would it be helpful if I sent you some properties? You know, would it be helpful if I followed up with you in a couple months? Would it be helpful if maybe we set up a consultation? I can just let you know what's happening right now and then you can prepare for the next six months. Like this is now where I'm being like a consultant, right? And she may say, yeah, just stay in touch with me, follow up with me in a few months and I might be a little bit more ready. I just wanted to kind of browse right now. So now we're gonna go back to Firepoint and the certain things we're going to use to make sure we stay in touch with it, right? And this part right here is going to be really crucial. Um, so I'm just going to pick a lead. Actually, I have I have a lead already in here, which is a test lead that I use for training. So this test lead right here is basically it's my own information. So I have my phone number, I have my other email in here and I use it just to test out some of our campaigns. So this is gonna happen a lot. You're gonna to talk to people and they're not, they are interested, but they're not ready right now. And like I said earlier, is we wanna keep them engaged and we wanna make sure that we're top of mind so that when they are ready, they think of us, right? And we're constantly having new opportunities in the pipeline. And this is where we're gonna use some campaigns to our advantage. So anytime you're dealing with the buyer, what do buyers want, guys? Do buyers want an agent or at the end of the day, what does the buyer want? They want a house. They want a house, right? So the best way to stay in touch with people is to send them properties that fit their criteria, right? Because what that's gonna do, it's gonna keep you top of mind. It's gonna send them out a consistent email. It's gonna have your face, your name, all those different things. So if you can ask questions about where they're looking to buy, like the Asenia said, you know, she wants a lot, this and this and that. And I'm able to send it, set up a custom search. That's going to help do some of the nurturing and the follow-up for me. So I'm not going to show you guys how to do a search that, you know, you're going to want to go into Firepoint and watch the video on how to set up a search. But I want to really emphasize that you got to put people on searches. So every single buyer that you come in contact with has to go on a property search because the property search, it doesn't matter if you're sending them the right properties or if you got their criteria down 100%, the property search is a way for you to stay top of mind with that client, right? So I want us to really understand that the property search serves two purposes. It serves the purpose of sending them homes that they may be interested in seeing. 
And it serves the purpose of keeping you top of mind with that agent during that nurturing process. So if a client told me, you know, they don't want to buy for six months, but I ask them where they want to buy. Um, what homes are you looking for? What's some of your criteria? I'm going to keep you up to date on what's available. And then in six months, we can always chat. I'm going to set that person up with a home search that has all their criteria so that they're getting homes that appeal to them. And then I'm going to put those like on a weekly or a monthly uh, frequency and you can play around with the frequency in FirePoint. And now what's going to happen, that client is now getting an email once a week from me or once a month from me with homes that fit their criteria. And the email is going to say homes that match your criteria from Enrique PRG real estate. They're going to click on it. They might browse through some of them. They might see five homes pop up. They might click on one. You can see their search history here. And that does part of the job for me, right? That does part of the nurturing for me where it's getting, sending them properties, right? What's also important, it's also important that I tag the lead correctly. So if that lead is a hot lead, like they're ready to go like very soon, I need to change it to hot. If it's a nurture and I know they're like three to six months out, I'm gonna change it to a nurture, right? So I need to make sure I tag the lead properly so that when I go back to follow up, like Blanca does every day and she's looking through her pipeline of who she has to call and who she has to follow up with, she can quickly filter out who the hot ones are that need more like frequent attention and who the nurtures are that need more long-term attention, maybe once a month, every few weeks or whatever it might be, right? So the tags are extremely important. Uh, I mean, the statuses, and then you can use tags as well for their time frame. So like if Yesenia, let's say this lead was Yesenia and she was the client and she told me three to six months out, I can tag three to six months, right? And I can tag her as a buyer. She would be like a B buyer. So she's a B buyer, three to six months out. She's a nurture. I put her on a search, right? And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put her on a, a follow-up campaign. So the campaigns are your best friends, guys. So if Yesenia said she wasn't ready for six months, like she didn't want to buy a house for six months, how often should I follow up with Yesenia? At least in about three months, once a month. Once a month, every three months, what would you guys say? How often would you follow up with someone who said they weren't ready to, to buy a house for six months? They are ready. They're going to buy, but they have to wait for something to happen. They're not ready for six months. Every How other week. <laughs> every other week. If they're not, if they're six months out. Um, I'd say frequency like monthly. Yeah, I would say monthly. Monthly is, is a good frequency. Not really necessarily to, to get them to buy, but just to stay in touch and say, hey, just, you know, checking in on you. Uh, Want to give you an update on what's happening in the market, right? Because during that six month period, if they're hearing from you once a month, they're getting your property searches. You're getting maybe a text or an email, just checking in on them. You're slowly building that credibility with them, right? You're slowly building that consistency where they get to know you. Following up every two weeks and they're six months out, they might get, they might feel bombarded a little bit, right? So anytime someone is like three to six months out, I would maybe keep it to like a monthly follow-up. If also, they're within I've, a, go ahead. Even I've gotten feedback as far as like how our website sends them properties. I've had them unsubscribe and then I follow up and they're just like, well, I'm not ready just yet. And I'm getting them every day. So then I go in there and I'll change it to like weekly, but like I get tired of just like, Oh, Hey, just checking in. So I'll just send them a property that I think is a good deal or that they would be interested in. I, you know, but yeah. I guess. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. And that's why the frequency is important, right? Um, six months out, I would say monthly. If they're, if they're a month out, then yeah, that's weekly right? Because their radar is on. Think about it this way. Like 
if you're gonna buy a new car and when you're about to buy a new car and you know you're like gonna buy a car soon or something like that you're constantly looking around right you're now seeing cars like it's in your mind you're on websites you're researching you're driving and you keep seeing the car that you want like your radar is is going off right now if you're not looking to buy a car for six months yeah you might do a little research here and there but you're not really your radar is not really going off right it's like it's it's you're on high alert the closer it gets to that time you're looking to transact right so the frequency needs to be less the further it is out right if someone's within a week within a month or even two months like yeah following up every week or two weeks just to keep people up to date because you know that they're going to be picking someone very soon and you want to influence that as much as possible right so Six months out, which you're going to get those people that are three to six, three to six months out, follow up with them monthly, put them on a monthly home search. So they're getting one email a month, put them on an auto campaign. So they're getting one, uh, one text and one like personal email a month. And the way you would do that is this. So you're going to go into this. I'm going to show you the campaign and you'll see these auto follow-ups right here. So auto follow up one time per week for one month, auto follow up one month for six months, auto follow up once a year for five years, auto follow up every six months for two years. The ones you'll probably use more frequently are these top two, depending on their time to transact. I would say if they're three to six months out, it's a once a month follow up. And what's gonna happen is when I apply this, and I'm gonna apply it for myself, and I'm gonna hit save, um, I'm going to stop this one here. So you'll see, this is the campaign I just applied. And you see right here, start date, July 11th. Next step, August 11th. So it's basically one month from now. It's going to send them a text. Hey, Enrique, just checking in. Any updates on your real estate plans? It's a simple, casual text, just a check-in. And here's what's gonna happen. When you send someone a, a check-in text like this, two things are gonna happen, two outcomes. Either one, they respond to you and say, hey, Enrique, thanks for checking in. You know, I'm still a little, still not really looking yet. You know, I'm still a few months out. The other response is that they don't respond to you at all right? Which is probably the most common one, right? It's when someone's further out and you send them an email once a month, they may not respond at all. That's perfectly fine. It doesn't matter if they respond. We're not, remember, we're not going to close a deal over a text message. That's not the way it goes down. The whole purpose of the nurture is to just stay top of mind, right? Because they're going to get that text message and they're going to see, okay, Enrique is still thinking about them. Enrique is checking in. He also sent me some properties. I'm seeing properties once a month come from Enrique. He's texting me once a month. Maybe you might call them like after the third month, right? And you, maybe they don't answer, but you leave a voicemail. You know, hey, Yesenia, it's Enrique. Just, you know, I was just going through my notes, just checking in on you, making sure everything's good. I know you said you're about six months out. Uh, Want to keep you updated on the market. So once you're ready, you know what's going on, right? That's the nurture game, right? But what's gonna happen is when that six months comes up and maybe it's month five and they know they gotta make a move within that six month, now their radar is going off, right? Now they're looking, now they're clicking on the properties that you sent them. Now they're responding to that text because now the time frame is getting closer and you've slowly showed them that you're the person that is on it. That's how you're going to convert these leads at a high level, right? We're coming up with time, but what I'm going to finish with is your job is to attract leads, right? We know we're going to attract leads, but once you get that lead to come into your world, it's your job to now put them in the appropriate bucket and to implement the appropriate follow-up strategies. If they're a hot, hot lead, and of course, you're going to attack that lead right now. You're going to try to book the appointment. You're going to try to set up the showing. You're trying to close that deal right now. If they're a hot, hot lead, meaning they're looking to transact in the next one to two months, that's a hot lead. 
if they're a nurture, they got to go into your nurture bucket and you got to implement all of these things. You got to implement the home search. You got to implement the text campaign. You got to let that system do some of the work for you so that they constantly are being warmed up, right? And then you got to spend that time every single day going into FirePoint and figuring out who you need to call, right? You can look through the notes and see when they got a text from you. Hey, this person, I haven't talked to them. They've gotten some of my texts. They've gotten some of my emails, the autos, the automatic stuff, but I haven't physically spoken to them on the phone in a couple months. I'm going to give them a call and just check in or just give them an update on what's happening with the market. That's the game you're playing. Any questions, comments, feedback? Okay, so here's your homework, guys. We're going to wrap up now. Your homework is number one, to fully understand this stuff, right? So I'm gonna put in Slack, I'm gonna put a copy of the lead management policy right now once we hang up. The lead management policy basically breaks down all the stuff I just talked about, right? It's kind of step-by-step. Step. I just explained everything to you right now with examples. So I want you to internalize that, right? Read it, understand it, understand this is the game you're playing, understand this is what you signed up for, all that good stuff, right? Your next step in your homework, guys, is now for you to go into your leads and take some action, right? Because some of you guys may have leads and they're just totally, there's opportunity being missed right now. They're not tagged correctly. The statuses aren't correctly, uh, aren't done correctly. They're not on property searches, right? You guys may have a ton of Zillow leads like Zillow Flex that aren't on any property searches. So you're not influencing the conversion of that lead right? Because you didn't put them on anything. It's going to take some time. The more leads that you have, the more time it's going to take, right? So you may have to break this up into, into different things, or maybe this is what you spend, you know, your mornings while you're, while you're doing new business development, this is part of the new business development, right? Going through things and putting people on campaigns, putting them on searches and stuff like that, right? So making sure you go through all your leads and you implement the strategies that we just talked about. Um, that's the biggest piece of homework. And then just knowing that going forward, you now know I have to be intentional and I have to have a process of how I treat every single lead going forward, right? And that's the hard part, right? Because it takes work. It takes time. It takes a little energy. It takes some effort, right? You know, there's some things that can happen automatically, but you got to also go in there and physically, you know, set people up with stuff. But what we said in the beginning, guys, is that a lot of people have had success in this business over the last few years simply because the market was hot. Going forward, we cannot just rely on the market being hot because people are being affected, right? If the rates are higher, if inventory is higher, whatever it might be, there's going to be some people that just don't trend. There's not going to be as many people that transact that were before. So this is where now you have the opportunity as agents and you're building these strong foundation and these strong habits, right? To now be the difference maker. You could be the, the different agent, the agent that really takes this stuff seriously, that takes lead conversion seriously, that says, hey, when I get a lead, that lead equals X amount of dollars. And we can do the math, guys. If you get an average lead for a million bucks, even if it's Zillow Flex or whatever it might be, that's an eight to ten ten thousand dollar paycheck if you close that lead. We've done the math, right? Even after splits, even after paying Zillow or whatever it might be, a million dollar deal at the low end is an eight thousand dollar paycheck. At the high end, it could be more, depending if it's your SOI, depending if there's a referral fee. It could be, you know, twelve to fifteen thousand. So if we know that, if we know that each lead can equal ten thousand dollars how would you be treating each lead that comes into your world? Same thing goes with your friends, your family, any people that you connect with at an open house, any people that hit you up via social media. We have to have that multi-layered approach, right? Where they're getting texts, they're getting emails, they're getting phone calls, they're seeing you on social media, all those different things. And that's how you convert these leads at a high level. That's how you influence them. That's how you get them to remember you and not forget you. All right, guys, that's all I got. Uh, 
Hope you guys got something out of this today. And I'm excited to see you guys take some action. Um, keep me posted, guys. Keep me posted. Um, and even our group, like if you go out and you start implementing some of these things, you're putting people on campaigns, keep me posted on some of the results that you get, right? I know Blanca, Blanca real quick, with the campaigns, um, I think you guys closed a deal recently. I yes. forgot who was, what deal you closed, you closed recently. I'm sorry, what was that? There was a deal I think you closed recently where it was a long-term nurture and they were on a campaign. Um, I don't know if it was with Harold or if it was. I'm trying to think who it was. It was a, few um, months, a few months back, I think. Yeah, it might have. Um, I don't remember if it was with Harry or who it was with, but they were on a long time uh, nurture campaign. I think it was a little over a year. And then just because we were staying top of mind with the campaign, it became active again and we engaged. And it wasn't really me sending them messages. It was a campaign alerting me. And then I would chime in from my cell phone just to kind of also correlate and not let them feel that it was like an automatic thing. Because sometimes customers also get that vibe that they're on an automatic system and they they tend to, to think it's not really me. She's not really sending it to me. So by it alerting me, then I would send a text message from my phone. Um, and that's how we engaged again. And we were able to get them into their home and close. And think about it, guys. That's over a year in the pipeline, right? A lead that came in over a year ago. Yeah. Um, they weren't ready at that time. Put them on a campaign. They're getting texts. They're getting emails every month. They're getting property searches. And after a year... They respond, hey, we're ready to start looking again. We're yeah. ready to start buying again. And then that's where Blanca came in, engaged them, yeah. put them up in homes and got them in contract. But if you don't set them on a campaign or a search, it's really not doing the work for you. And, and the reason I say it's important to set them on a search, because even the search, it, when you go in onto that lead, you can see what their activity is, what they're looking at. And that's like topic of, of conversation. Hey, I noticed that you looked at one, two, three main street. What did you think? Did you like it? Do you want to set a time to tour versus when you don't have them on anything, it's even hard for you to start up a conversation. But if you're engaging with the activity that they're doing on FirePoint, it makes that call so much easier. Yep. Yeah. So CRMs, guys, and these campaigns, they only work if you work them, right? Like you've yeah. got to put them to work. These are your best friends. This is how you're going to be able to take a high volume of leads and close more deals in the same amount of time than yeah. someone who's just trying to do all this stuff manually and doesn't have a system in place. Like, right. Like let the, let the system do a lot of the heavy lifting for you Yeah. and, and watch what happens to your business. All right, guys, I got to get running. Thank you guys so much for attending. Hope you guys learned something today. We will see you next time.